Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at the IB81 security camera from Ape Man. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at a wireless, or potentially wireless, home security camera from the people over at Ape Man. Now this is a 1080p camera, two megapixel, uh, features like 24 seven recording. It runs on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum on Wi-Fi. You can also use it via a wired LAN connection if that's uh, applicable to you, or if maybe you can't get your Wi-Fi signal to where you want the camera to be. Um, you've got 110 degree field of view, high sensitive microphone, motion detection, a powerful Wi-Fi antenna, if you're choosing to go the Wi-Fi route. Uh, you can get sound from the built-in microphone for up to about five meters. Also, you get instant alerts sent to the app on your mobile device, and that's iOS or Android. And also, it's got a encrypted SD card. So any information which is on the SD card, if for some reason someone tries to steal the camera and then try to get access to whatever's actually on the SD card, they cannot get access to it, it cannot be played back, it can only be played back within the application itself or from your device. So let's take a look and see what we get actually in the package. So okay, there is quite a lot in this pack. So let's uh, let's go through some of the things. So first of all, there is actually an introductory offer. So if you purchase one of these off of Amazon, you can actually uh, write a review, send them your review number and your ID number, purchase ID and all that kind of thing. And they will send you a SanDisk Ultra 16 gig card. There isn't actually one included in the box, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so if you want a 16 gig card, you can actually review it and get one sent to you free of charge. So that's that bit. There's also a introductory eight man leaflet, which got all the contact details. So should you have any problems, questions or comments, you can contact them directly from the links in the little booklet. Uh, next up, we have a rather large instruction manual which I've had a quick scan through. And actually it does look very comprehensive. So uh, hopefully this should be pretty straightforward to do. From what I can see, this actually looks like it's gonna be a very easy to set up device. And another good thing, it uses the uh, Smart Life app by Toya, which actually has been around for a long, long time, gets constant updates. So if you have any concerns about maybe Ape Man as a company, maybe uh, stopping their services or anything, much like we've had the experience with the Xiaomi cameras, um, this hopefully shouldn't be a problem. Toya is a massive company. They support a massive, massive wide range of smart devices, including this camera. So uh, we should be good for the long haul. So that's the instruction manual. Um, you get a lot of fitting kit actually. So this bit here is a kind of a waterproof gland, which you can use for securing your Cat5 cable if you're using Cat5 or Cat6. Uh, there's also some weatherproofing included in there and a ceiling ring, which we'll show you more in a little bit. You get a extension cable for the power. So this is your uh, traditional power cable. Now this is like the barrel connection. So this is three meters long. The one actually on the power supply itself is 1.5 meters long. So you've got 4.5 meters straight out of the box. And these are actually really easy to get hold of on Amazon. So if you want to extend it even further, maybe 10 meters or even more, then um, I'll try and put some links in the description below so you can check out those options as well. So good power options straight out of the box, nice long cable. You get the Wi-Fi antenna, which just uh, screws to the back of the camera itself. There's a uh, more fitting kit option. So you've got some uh, wall plugs and some screws. There's some uh, cable management options there. So you've got some sticky pads so you can hide the cables should you need to. There's also a template for if you're drilling into a masonry wall or whatever it may be, you can stick this on the wall, then use your drill bit or powered screwdriver to uh, set out where the screw's gonna be to save the kind of the guesswork of where the screws actually lie. And also there's an Allen key. Now the Allen key itself is for the camera and for setting the angle. Now this is actually quite a clever method of adjusting the angle. So rather than being various thumb screws and all that kind of stuff, you've basically got one grub screw, which is the Allen key fit in here. So if you loosen it all off, then you get all your rotation and all your up and down angles, all that kind of thing. So my suggestion would be to leave that kind of loose whilst you're in the fitting process. And once you're all done, you can use the Allen key and then just tighten the grub screw back up and that will fix the camera in its final position. So that's all the fitting kit and all the accessories. 
Let's take a look at the camera itself. Now this camera actually is quite a, quite a heavy camera. It's got a very solid construction all around. It's IP66 weather rated, so you can't submerge it in water, which uh, I guess being that it's gonna be on the side of a building or wherever, it's unlikely that's gonna happen, um, but it will be protected against the elements. So splashes, rain, all that kind of stuff isn't gonna cause it any problems whatsoever. And even things down to where the SD card goes, which is in the back of the device. Now the SD card, the cover is actually weatherproof as well. There's a rubber seal in there. So your SD card is gonna be uh, completely protected. Sorry, micro SD card, just to uh, clarify there. So everything about it actually screams quality. It's finished in a really nice kind of satin matte white, uh, which actually looks like it's gonna be relatively easy to clean. The, the actual finish on it isn't too heavily grained. So any um, dirt or kind of age marks should be able to wipe off there quite easily with just a, a clean cloth. So also on the back, you've got the screw connector for the aerial or antenna. So we'll actually we'll screw that on while we're, uh, while we're doing this. So that's nice and easy to do. Now, obviously, if you are planning to go down the wired route, then that isn't gonna be applicable. Um, this is actually one of my slight areas of concern. Now this cable that comes out of the camera itself, um, I would say, what's that, just slightly over a foot long. It then splits into three sections. So these three sections are your connectivity. So there is a reset switch. So should you have a problem with the device and you need to reset it, you can just take that cap off, the weatherproof cap, and press the reset button, which is just a, a general on-off switch, toggle switch. So that is possibly quite handy, although I would have rather have seen a reset switch maybe on the camera itself and to lose that additional cable. Also here, we've got the connection for our Cat5. So if you're going for the wired option, you can use that there. Um, again, this is a slight concern of mine. There is the, the weatherproofing option, which I shall get out now. So if, you're, if you are installing a cable, a Cat5 ethernet cable, then you can put this uh, rubber seal on and then this attaches so that will then seal it and then your cable would come out this side. There's also a rubber gland in there to prevent any water ingress. Uh, I would have also have liked to have seen just a blanking cap for this, very similar to what they've got on the reset switch. I would imagine predominantly most of the people that are buying this as a wireless device are planning to go wireless. So to me, this cable really isn't necessary and possibly could be taken out of the design altogether. But okay, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Are you likely to be going wired or wireless with this kind of device? And so then we move on to the last connection. So this is our power connection. So simply it's just a matter of using the barrel connector and plugging in. Now the, the actual outer does sleeve the inner, so there isn't gonna be any water ingress, so you are gonna be okay with that. Although I don't know whether over time that may come loose and expose slightly, although it's only gonna expose the outer part of the barrel, not the inner part, so you shouldn't find any uh, short circuits or anything like that, it should be absolutely fine. But again, this is one of my, my concerns. I would have rather have seen this particular cable coming from the camera to the splitter being considerably longer. Um, this is actually gonna be quite difficult to, to hide or to disguise or to nicely cable manage, especially for those of us here in the United Kingdom where we have generally um, cavity walls. So you have a line of bricks, a cavity insulation, and then another line of bricks. So to get that cable to go through two lots of bricks and the cavity, essentially you're probably gonna be coming up to kind of this area here. So this is what you're gonna have either sticking out of the wall or you're gonna have to push that back into the cavity and then that loses your option for using the reset switch. So again, depending where you're planning on installing it, what you're gonna do with it, you may have to kind of carefully configure or plan your wiring route. Now, when I set this up in a minute, after I've put it on the, uh, the application, I'm gonna just put it outside. I've got a space where I'm gonna put it. It's not the final position, uh, purely because of how the wiring is. So I'm literally gonna have the wire hanging down and I'm gonna plug it into the nearest main socket, which I've got outside. I was hoping to put this in a more permanent place, but again, because of that wiring block there, it does kind of limit your options. I could get a, a big drill bit out and drill a big hole through the wall, and then maybe try and tuck these cables in, but 
actually this for me is a big concern. For those of you possibly in the United States or uh, in other types of housing where you've got maybe um, timber construction or whatever, or even plaster boarded walls, whatever it may be, then obviously that is gonna be a lot easier for you to hide and disguise. Uh, but for some with brick construction, this could definitely be a problem. Okay, so we're back and now we're outside setting up the camera and unfortunately it's raining, so I'm underneath the canopy, but luckily the eight man is weatherproof, so that doesn't need any shelter, but I certainly do and Calf certainly does. So let's go straight into it. So first of all, let's open up the Smart Life app. Now, obviously you need to have a Smart Life app installed and an account set up, which I've done already. That's really boring stuff, so I haven't shown that here, but if you do want a guide on how to do that, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, make sure to do one. So let's open up the Smart Life app and first of all, we're greeted with Add Device. So we'll click on Add Device. And it's asking you what sort of device you want. Now we're going for a security sensor. So click on that and then smart camera. So now it tells you you need to just power on the device and make sure the indicator light is flashing quickly or a prompt tone is heard. Now on the camera, you probably can't catch it in this light, but there is a green light flashing. So that means we're good to go. And this is where you put in your Wi-Fi password. And we'll go with that. And now we have to let the camera scan the QR code. So click on continue and we'll get a QR code, which looks like that, which you can probably see here as well. So now I need to show this QR code to the camera. And you should get an audible bleep from the camera to say that it's actually recognized it and has taken the information in. So you click on, I heard a prompt. And you should get another bleep to say that the camera is connecting to the Wi-Fi and is doing what it should do. If you don't get that bleep, something's gone wrong and you need to start again possibly change your Wi-Fi from 4.2 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz or vice versa. So device is added successfully. You can now choose to name it something if you want to. Uh, video camera works for me, so we'll click on done. You can add a location, so I'm gonna choose garden and hit done. And there we go. Now you can see what the camera can see, which is Kath as well, which she's not gonna like a great deal, but it's not really a great deal I can do about that. And we can change the resolution, so HD or SD, and it also gives you your signal strength at the top of the screen. Also, you've got other options, so click on the settings and you can change device name, shared device. So if you want to share a device with family, etc., you can add their details in there. You get your device's information, which is IP addresses or MAC addresses, that kind of thing, which I'm not going to show you for obvious reasons. Uh, basic function settings, so status indicator. So if you don't want to have a status indicator on the lamp, which currently at the moment is set to blue, um, you can turn that on or off if you wish to. You can flip the screen, so if you mount it upside down, you can get a 180 flipped image. You can remove the time watermark if you want to, but ideally you want to try and keep that so you've got a date and time stamp. And the IR night vision, you can set to either auto, on or off. So I'm gonna leave it as auto, because, well, that makes great deal of sense to me. Uh, other things you've got, let's say motion detection. So you have a motion detection alarm. So you can set this so that if you have motion in front of the camera's field of vision, you'll get a notification come to your smartphone. So it will alert you should you not be at a premises. You could then check out that information, click on it, and you can see a small section of the recorded video to see what the actual highlight was. Uh, other settings, memory card settings, you can go in, it tells you capacity of the card, how much of it's actually been used. As you can see in here, I've used 18.9 gigabytes because I've been running this for a few days, but I've just reset it. So it's going to carry on loop recording over the top. So if I turn on SD card recording, and now you can choose for event recording, so notifications or anything that passes through the camera, motion detection, or non-stop recording, which we're going to choose. So that is completely running 24 seven and will obviously overwrite the latest piece of footage or the last piece of footage that you don't need in a constant loop fashion. Uh, also, you've got the option to format the memory card should you wish to. Now, talking about the memory card, if you take the memory card out of there, you cannot actually view it on a computer. It is encrypted and is encrypted via the app. So if you do want any information, you have to watch it on your phone. You can, whilst you're doing that, you can actually take screenshots. So click on record or in the playback button, you can choose the uh, calendar mode. So you can check out various dates that you've recorded and you can click on record to record a section of footage or a snapshot if you just want to take a picture. So say for instance, some scumbag stolen your bike, 
you can go through, find the footage, take a screenshot, post it on Facebook, social media, all that kind of thing to try and uh, apprehend the bad guys. So I think that pretty much sums it up. That's most of the features in there. Um, there are other cameras in the 8-man range which you can add to this app and it does use the Toya system. So Smart Life app, the Toya app and various others can be used. Uh, I've used the Smart Life app because I've used it before and I quite like it. But again, because it supports a lot of different uh, systems and standards, you can use it in pretty much any app. Uh, there's other things in there, so things like the alarm, so the motion detector alarm, all that kind of thing, so you can get a... Uh, you can set your sensitivity and get notifications to your phone, all that kind of thing. Um, cloud video is a section you can actually subscribe to the cloud video service on Amazon Web Services. There is a monthly fee for that, so entirely up to you whether you want to do that, but that does give you an extra level of security. So should anything happen to the SD card, the camera, your phone or whatever, you can still gain access to that by signing into your account. Um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up most of the features from what I can see. Um, another thing to bear in mind, where I've actually mounted it there, you can see there's some wooden panel in. I've used that to hide the cable in which I was talking about earlier in the video. So at the moment I've got my reset switch which is just hanging out the bottom there, so I've got easy access to it should I need to, but I can always tuck that back up inside. I did end up drilling a hole in the wall straight through into the kitchen and plugged it into one of the kitchen sockets, so power is coming straight from there. Um, another good way of doing this, or a reason why I've done this, with that wooden panel in, I can just undo the two screws here and I can remove the whole unit from the wall, disconnect the mains, and I can take it away for any maintenance should I need to, or to change out SD cards, so it, it's not a permanently mounted feature on the wall. And I don't think it actually looks too bad. I was really concerned about the wires showing, but by using that concealment panel, I think it's worked out pretty well. So that's been the 8-man IB81 1080p Wi-Fi camera. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully, the camera won't be seeing you anytime soon. Thanks for watching.